and see what he can do in the midst of unbelievers, on the leading edge with his word, his power, his grace, and his mercy. For God's sakes, we're Lutheran. This is what we know. I also think, uh, Pastor, that uh, so it's, we don't want to fall into uh, trying to communicate uh, to the audience that we don't understand or appreciate the fact that some of our some governors in different states are not being equal in the way that they apply certain restrictions to to whether it be a church, uh, supermarket, ma malls, or wh whatever. And so there is a valid point to to be made to the to the fact that. Uh, so I'll just mention uh, this name, Trent Horn. He's a Roman Catholic uh, apologist. <clears throat> and he tweeted out, uh, he displayed it all over his social media uh, platforms, that there were some Roman Catholic parishes that were being attacked not only by the government, but also by some parishioners. They were arguing that even if you have only five parishioners gathering together, in a, in a parish and trying to practice social distancing. Some people have real problems with that. And you can make the argument, the, the, the reasonable argument, that that's going too far. And if you want to live by that, those standards, you also have to apply that to many other arenas. And so we also have to be fair and say that that is also a, a wrong thing to do. Would, right. you, would you agree? With right. That? So, yeah. So I think it comes down to obedience and when is civil disobedience appropriate? Correct. Uh, so, you know, just like in the in the kingdom of the left, we're to obey governmental officials. In the kingdom of the right, we're to obey our pastors. But that doesn't mean that government officials and pastors are not accountable. Mm -hmm. Well, what are they accountable to? They're accountable to the people ultimately, right? Yes. So when the, the pastor is not preaching and, and teaching in accordance with the, 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 the Holy Scriptures, uh, the people need to hold the pastor accountable. If they're not living a life uh, in accordance uh, with the moral law of God as summarized by the Ten Commandments, they need to be held accountable. Uh, conversely, government officials, it, it doesn't mean that they can do whatever they want and we're just supposed to obey. Mm -hmm. uh, again, whenever they have directives that are in conflict with the Word of God uh, and cause us to sin, we are to disobey. But I think in this case, it's not so much having a problem with the directive, it's the unequal, uh, the unequal application of the directive. Correct. And that should be challenged in a respectful way, right? We don't have to be ugly, we can say, hey, wait a minute here. So in Kentucky, for instance, <laughs> yeah. you're telling me that if we apply uh, the CDC, implement the CDC guidelines for yes. our congregation here, that we can't function or you are unfairly targeting us, but yet the liquor store is open. Correct. The abortion clinic is open. Yeah. Uh, people who go to Walmart and are going to Lowe's and the grocery stores, they are not abiding by CDC guidelines. So in that case, if the government is overreaching or mm -hmm. there's an unequal implementation, then of course, right, mm -hmm. we as Christians can, can challenge in question. Correct. Now, how we do that is the key, yes. right? We should not be ugly about it. We should not be untoward, but we certainly can call into question in the same manner in the kingdom of the right. Mm -hmm. If the pastor is, is, is preaching something that's, wait a minute, what do you mean uh, uh, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are, uh, there's no such thing as the Trinity. It's just mm -hmm. God. It's all God. You know, one God and the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are just titles for that one God. Pastor, we got a problem with that. You know, the pastor needs to be held accountable, right, yes. uh, to the scriptures, and, and the people hold them accountable. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we are to obey blindly. Uh, you know, people can go back to Nazi Germany. Were, we supposed to, were they supposed to obey Hitler mm, when he? Yeah. You know, uh, of course not, right? Uh, so civil disobedience uh, is called for at times. And when are we called to civilly disobey? When they are. Uh, laws or directives that cause us to disobey God. We have to obey God rather than man. Mm -hmm. um, now, if there's an unequal implementation, hey, we're going to levy this against the church, but not a comparable organization, if you will, then we could call into question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, why, 
why are we being targeted, yeah. right? And this person is not being targeted. I think a part of that discussion would we would have to uh, also incorporate uh, what is what is considered non-essential, because to, to Christians, to religious people, the ability to gather together in having worship that's pretty essential for us, and so just the same way that you allow for other essential sit situations like buying your groceries or whatever, going to the doctor. I would, I would argue that allowing for people to gather together in a safe manner is an essential thing, yeah. and you should allow for people to... Yeah. Part of the problems that we have in our country right now is uh, we always establish these... Before you go... Oh, oh sorry. Go before, I, I just thought about this. Maybe it's more, it is more fashionable, it is more expedient and easier to beat up on the rights of Christians because <laughs> this country is becoming very, or it's already a lot very secular. And so it's, it's kind of uh, in vogue right now to say, you know what, Christians really don't have any rights, so uh, shut down there. I, I mean, I even saw people trying to argue that keeping an abortion clinic open is more essential than having churches open. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's what we're facing as Christians. Yeah, I think one of the problems that we have in our country right now is where we constantly uh, create false dichotomies. And Correct. I think one of the one of the biggest problems right now, when we talk about false dichotomies, is this false dichotomy between what's essential and what's not essential. Okay. Are you telling me that teachers who are not working right now are not essential? <laughs> are we saying that you know your vocation is not essential? Are we you know? So I think that's just wrong. That's a false dichotomy. I think in a pandemic like this, we're just saying that some vocations, right? We're getting into vocation are, now. Right, are, are, are necessary for this time right now in order to get through it. And other vocations, although they're necessary and essential uh, to our society right now during this pandemic, uh, they can be you know, temporarily uh, suspended or those jobs can be done at home. But this whole di false dichotomy of essential and non-essential, or false dichotomies all the time of if you don't agree that uh, uh, you know if you believe marriage is between one man and one man and one woman, then that automatically means you hate homosexuals. No, 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 no. That's a false dichotomy, right? So, I think we're in, you know, it's the same thing with this essential and non-essential, because at the core, you're right. If religion was not essential, it would not be a constitutional right. Oh. Uh, so it, it's absolutely essential. Now, I think what we're getting kind of legalities here, but uh, I think that in a pandemic, the, the situation is that this is freedom of religion, but in a pandemic, certain freedoms can be limited, but then you have to offer a least restrictive alternative. So where the offense comes in is when somebody says that your religious needs can be met online. Well, for sacramental Christians like us, I can't partake of the body and blood of Christ online. <laughs> I can't be baptized online. That is correct. Right? So, so it makes a mockery, right? And that's why I think the governor went wrong. Is I, you know, I, I, I empathize. I would not want to be in his situation or his role. I empathize with him. You but mean the we, governor? Yeah, the governor. Oh, but when he made that comment, you know, he made a comment that virtual church or doing it online should be acceptable. Well, if you're not sacramental, I would understand right. why they and, say that. And the other thing also is, is that he can't determine for me yeah. what is acceptable for, for, for my sincerely held religious beliefs. And that's the only thing that I kind of was like, come on, Governor, now. We, you know, I respect you, love you, appreciate what you're doing. Don't agree with all your positions, by the way, but you can't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe for a Baptist, it's fine. Maybe for a Pentecost. I mean, and I'm just being honest, and I'm not trying to throw, uh, disparage anybody but if you're not a sacramental Christian, on the online experience is perfectly fine. Probably whether you're in a pandemic or not. Yeah. Uh, and and this is why I didn't, I, I wasn't a big fan of online services um, initially because of these things, yes. you know. But but if you're a sacramental Christian, you, the, the, totally empty. The Lord's Supper, right? Totally empty. Uh, so 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 I think that's the problem. I think we, as it relates to Kentucky and maybe some other states, is the in e the, the, the lack of equality in its implementation, mm -hmm. and it seems as if the churches are kind of being targeted yeah. and being spoken of more than Walmart or the Dollar General or, you know, what's the difference if I go to Popeye? I went to Popeye's, no one's practicing social distancing there. By the way, yeah. You know, you go to Lowe's, no one's practicing social distancing there. So I get what you're saying, Governor, 
but a group of people that meet two hours a week, mm -hmm. if they can implement the CDC guidelines and follow that, why are you sweating them more than you are other folks? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where people are getting a little bit, and they're starting to feel like, yeah, are you saying that my religious freedoms are not essential? They are essential. They're essential to our country, and they're essential to us as believers. And a least restrictive alternative is not necessarily, uh, it, an online virtual church service is not necessarily an acceptable long-term least restrictive alternative. Oh, yes, correct. Um, so I think that's where we get into play. Now, had they been discussing churches that were not practicing the CDC guidelines? Mm -hmm. eh, I can see that. But there was a church in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. I think they only had 10 members. They wiped it all down. They, everyone practiced social distancing. And somehow that pastor made it into the, the media as, you know, not concerned about saving lives or something like that. I don't want to mm -hmm. misspeak or misrepresent, but... You know, I, I think I saw something like that coming in through mm. uh, some some means of, of media. But, you know, I think that's uh, now, again, mm. if there comes a point in time, my good brother, where everything is reopened. Right. And the church isn't. Right. So if we go back to, you know, we talk about when to disobey the government, civil disobedience, when to challenge oh, them. Wow, I think I know what so let's say that we reopen everything. Everything's open. Even Wall Street. But, but the church, not yet. No. Uh, then, you know. You can make an argument. This is kind of persecution. Yeah. Because we, we as people of God, we're citizens of two kingdoms, the kingdom of the right, the kingdom of the left. Right. And we owe due obedience to the authority structures in both realms for as long as they are, what you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, governing fairly in accordance with the natural law mm -hmm. and the scriptures, the okay. kingdom of the right. Uh, and when they cease to do that, then then uh, we should uh, uh, challenge uh, in a in a godly and Christ-like manner and, and, and hold people accountable. I think that as Lutherans, uh, we were discussing this offline. But it's such a, I appreciate the balance that he brought as a theologian, the fact that we can live with paradox, and for, we, we, we let the scriptures hang where they have to hang, and, and we live with that comfortably. And by the way, we're not the only tradition that necessarily d does that, Eastern Orthodoxy, uh, to, a large, uh, to a large extent, does the same thing. Um, and we also have the, uh, I think, the space and the freedom to be critical of to, to, to any side that goes too far. If you if the if the government is going too far, we can critique it, and rightfully so. And if people are beating up on the government and trying to act as if to be a Christian is to be a radical uh, libertarian or anarchist, we can beat up on that tip too. Because the Bible doesn't teach either or. Correct. And we rebel where we have to rebel, or we can we can respond respectfully, as you said. And, and there's nothing, there's nothing uh, 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 wrong with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, do you want to uh, close with anything or any closing remarks? No, I think remarks? that's good. I, I think that's you know the whole you know when we think when we think here of um, the kingdom of left and right, it's mm -hmm. a long gospel framework, right? Correct. So, and and I think here's what's in, in, important. I remember in seminary hearing this. Yes. Is God a righteous judge? Who judges sin mm -hmm. will punish sin. And he's a judge. Or is God a loving, kind, benevolent God? That sounds like a false dichotomy. Which which is he? <laughs> well, in this case, he's both, right? Yeah, he's both. And when we fall too far on one side or the other, mm -hmm. right, we lose the tension. Correct. So if I just see the, the, the judgmental God, now I become legalistic and I only see a God that I fear because I don't obey the law. If I collapse over here, now I become anti-law. There, there is no law. There is no judgment of God. He's just a loving father, Correct. so now I can do whatever I want. No. So we have to live in the tension, mm -hmm. right, of this judge, you know, uh, God of judgment, but this loving God who's a savior. We have to live in this tension of law and gospel and not mm -hmm. collapse on one side or the other, mm -hmm. but keep that distinction. And, and I think you are right. You described Luther as talking about the, the drunk that's on the... The horse and the rider, mm -hmm. and he falls on one side, the other side. But the goal is is to be moderate and to right stay on the horse, walk down the center of Scripture, 
between law and gospel, right? Your two, your, your dual citizenship, right? Your justification, sanctification, all these things are meant to keep us balanced and to uh, be the biblical Christians that God has called us to be. Amen. And, and when we lose that tension, that's when we fall <laughs> to one side or the other yes. and in all sorts of sin. And yeah, yeah I, I just wanted to, uh, in closing, uh, read, maybe I should read the, uh, yeah, just, to, just to, to close reading the second paragraph of the article is pretty short. And so uh, do that and then some closing remarks. And uh, that will be all for, for this moment. So it, it, says, it says the following. Our churches condemn the Anabaptists who forbid these political offices to Christians. They also condemn those who do not locate evangelical perfection in the fear of God and in faith but place it in the forsaken political offices. We, we spoke a little bit about that briefly. You know, this idea that when you remove, when you, um, the, the, the sinful, our, our sinful Adam loves to idolize the things that it shouldn't uh, at all. So instead of just having a simple faith in God and just trust the, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, we tend to deviate. Our, our hearts are wonder, like to wonder and, place our righteousness in rejection of the law or rejection of the government or whatever it is. And so here he's saying that is the error. You do not locate evangelical perfection in the fear of, of God and faith, but place it in forsaken political offices, which it sounds crazy to us, but we are prone to do that. It says, for the gospel teaches an eternal, an eternal righteousness of the heart. At the same time, it does not require the destruction of the civil state or the family. The gospel very much requires that they be preserved as ordinances and that the love be practiced in such ordinances. So it's not only keeping the law, but also love as we spoke about. <clears throat> and it says, therefore it is necessary for Christians to be obedient to the rulers and laws. The only exception is when they are commanded to sin. Then they ought to obey God rather than men. Acts chapter 5, 29. I think it's beautiful. I think it's precise. It's concise. Gets to the point. It does a great job. And so I want to thank you so much, Pastor John, for receiving me. It's always fun to come back here. Absolutely. I appreciate yeah, absolutely. the conversations. And um, one of the things that we want to do with this uh, channel and with this uh, series of conversations is to demonstrate that this very old book, this old faith that we have as Lutherans, uh, it's, not, it's not dead. It's, uh, we can apply this in a very uh, practical manner. It touches every, everything from uh, the civil government, our vocations as citizens, you name it. And so one of the goals that we, we have with this channel is to see that even as average Christians, the, just a the lady, we can go to this confessions, apply it in a very real manner to things that we are living through right now, right here, HD, live television, and uh, come out with a real understanding of what God is doing, what it has commanded us to do, what our tradition is all about. And we don't have to fall on either side of the horse. We can be in the center, we can be balanced, we can be reasonable, obey the government when we have to, uh, reject it when we have to in a respectful manner. Uh, and I think that's a that's a that's valuable to, to have the ability to say you know what I don't have to be a radical I don't have to be I don't have to uh, to do uh, anything out of the ordinary I can reasonably uh, say that you know what the Bible gives me freedom to do this gives me freedom to do that and and that's I think that's encouraging and that's uh, I think it's beautiful yeah and it's amazing yeah. so anyways. Uh, so next time, Pastor, we'll be recording the next chapter. Absolutely. And, uh, take it from there. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Lord bless you. Good to be with you.